Ortiz is here this evening with her troupe of Flamenco, Flamenco Worcester, but Edmi is here also as our Artist of the Month, and I'd invite people who are present to go and look at the exhibit on their way out or to come back, and people at home as well, to come into the library and admire the beautiful work that our talented, multi-talented presenter this evening is. And Edmi is joined by some musicians who have come from way across the state. So I, without further ado, I think we will get started and I will allow Edmi to maybe introduce everybody individually. Thank you very much, everybody. Thank you so much for being here. So before me, I would like to thank, thank the musicians. So let me introduce them anyway. So uh, we have Christina Nieves. coming from Connecticut. Uh, Roberto Rios, mm -hmm. coming from Chelsea. Chelsea. Eduardo Ortiz, <laughs> on the bass, from Worcester. He's my dad. Thank you. And dancing, I have my beautiful uh -huh. <laughs> Mimi, who is from Southbridge. Oh. And Larry Rosberry. So we're going to start with a piece that is called Fandango, the well one. If you feel like this, join us. Palmas is one of the most important elements in flamenco, and it's really helps us to keep it. So enjoy the show. <laughs> Thank you. 
you all for coming to see Flamenco Worcester here in Southbridge. Uh, I'd like to tell you a little bit about the history of Flamenco and some of the points to look for while you're watching the performance. Um, the first thing is that it's Flamenco, not Flamingo. <laughs> Flamingo, a beautiful bird. We have beautiful birds here. <laughs> but I would use both feet and the flamingos tend to stand on one. Uh, flamenco is, is from Andalusia in southern Spain and it's a very ancient art. It's actually uh, a way of life, uh, but it started uh, back around the first century when before Spain was Spain, there were groups of traveling musicians and traveling dancers who traveled around the Mediterranean and, uh, and performed for the Roman soldiers. And they traveled from Cadiz, which was then known as Gadir, to Rome and entertain. So <clears throat> these are the people who had the roots of the flamenco. Um, there was one famous dancer who was written about by many uh, Roman authors. Uh, her name was Telethusa. And um, there's a statue of her in a museum in Milan. And she's doing a flamenco pose with her arms out, which you've probably seen many times tonight. <clears throat> and um, it's called a, a Desplante. And this back um, 2,000 years, and that's still part of the flamenco dance today. So the, the, the roots go back then, but then they've been changed by um, immigration. In the uh, Arabs conquered southern Spain, Andalusia, and lived there for 800 years, and their influence in the dances and the music is part of what flamenco is today. The gypsies arrived in the 15th century, or 14th century, and brought with them uh, the footwork that, which comes from India and uh, also other elements, other musical elements from their travels throughout um, the Middle East into Eastern Europe and, and North Africa before they arrived in Spain. So that's another contributor. contributor. Then this, um, the African influence, which um, hip movement and um, and rhythms, some of the fun uh, syncopated rhythms that you'll hear later on tonight. I'll point out which ones they are, but these come from Africa and from South America. So flamenco is really world music, the first world music, I think. <clears throat> Someone once described it as a salad and um, said that the gypsies put the sauce on it or the, the dressing. <laughs> but you know, it, it, all of these different influences and the gypsies when they arrived sort of ad adopted it as their uh, musical style and, a, and a way for them to express themselves of their hard life and um, they became the group that transmitted this art forward and brought it up to a stage where it's now a world art that appears in concert halls as opposed to something that used to appear in private parties. So that's a, a quick run through. Um, let's see what we've got next. Uh, I'm going to play a song that's called Soleare. Um, in Spanish, the, a lot of the, uh, the dialects are reflected from the Andalusian dialects. And Soleare is a very old song form that led to uh, to future forms and um, it's uh, a 12 beat rhythm and it, it's considered cante hondo or deep song and the word actually soleada comes from the word soledad which means loneliness and each form is, uh, has its unique name tangos, soleada um, Paruca and so on. There's several, there's about 50 different forms. And the Soleares is a form that uh, led to Alegrías and Poderías and uh, other of the uh, 50 different palos, is what the term is that they use in Spanish. So, uh, 
So I will play for you with Juliani to give you an idea of the older, uh, passionate sounding flamenco. <laughs> similar to Soliaris in that it's a very old song from, um, it's called Seguirias and um, it's a song that the dancers and all of the artists can put their heart into um, it has an interesting rhythm which uh, would be somewhat difficult to follow it uh, for the un unaccustomed um, it, it, like three, four, six, eight times together. And uh, that's a beautiful dance. We've got beautiful dancers. We hope you enjoy it.
is play a, a duet for you. Um, that uh, comes from, as I mentioned before, the Soliaris was the, the, the basic form that developed. And then from that, they developed a style called Alegria. It's also known as Cantinas because there are many different Cantinas. Alegria, which means happiness. Caracoles, which means either snail, but it also refers to the <laughs> girl in the dancer's hair. They sing about the, uh, the caracoles and tupedos. And Mirabras, and there's several other ones. The one we chose to do today is caracol, caracoles. Um, it's an alegria from Madrid. Hope you enjoy. with the guitarist. So I just want to help with the beat a little bit. 
and something to the music so I cross my hands and I keep this Another percussion instrument we use besides castanets and palmas and cajon today is your feet. My shoes. These are actually this is the most important percussion instrument in flamenco. Uh, in the bottom of my shoes I have nails. Just to help myself a little bit with the sound. And I have five main steps. Golpe, which is flat, we call it flat. So I just come down all my weight, straight. I have heels, low heels, just this. And high heels. Tacon alto, tacon bajo. Tacon alto. O tacon bajo. I also do punta points. Everything comes from those five basic steps. So with those I can make any ballet dance experience. Ballet dancers all hold keep your arms right here. And on flamenco, we are all the way the back and top of your head. So there's a little difference in ballet. Everything is on here. <coughs> Elbows are down. In flamenco, we're dancing on the ground and your elbows are up. So it's opposite, just a little bit. Tell you a little bit about flamenco dancing. And now the dance, the next piece is called Alegrías. You spoke a little bit about the Alegrías before. Um, the rhythm is the same as the duet that we just did, but um, the, it, this song form is originally from uh, Cadiz, and um, it can be played in different keys and would have different names. But this is the Alegrías that will uh, give me an opportunity to show you all the different techniques. So, Alegrías in Spanish means happiness. So it's, a, it's called Cante Chico or light song, and, uh, as opposed to the Cante Hondo or the deep song of the Soleares and the Seguiría. Ole, vamos pa' Cádiz.
castanets. Castanets is a percussion instrument. Um, we usually wear them right on our thumbs. Usually, when when my students come to take classes, they keep them, the castanets. They wear them in the middle finger because why? Because um, there is uh, an instrument. Do you know how it's called the instrument that um, for the ceramic? No, the uh, um, group Yes. Because we have, like Roberto said, there is a lot of influence in flamenco from another cultures. But castanets, are, you're supposed to wear them in your phones like that. On my left, I have the boy. On my right, I have the girl. So why is that? <coughs> because the boy is going to keep the timing, everything in order. And the girl is going to do all the decoration, syncopated, mm -hmm. all the talking. And it's going all the time in between. Um, um, I don't know. I know what it is. So, and usually they have a conversation like the boys all the time. Keep the timing. And the girls go. Sometimes they go well, oh, very good. Sometimes they fight. <laughs> but the cruise is a very nice instrument. It's beautiful. Very difficult to play, not impossible. We practice, we get it, because as a dancer, we have to coordinate so many things like footwork in your arm and your head up and now the castanets and keep your fingers and foster so it's very challenging but it's beautiful and very rewarding when we get to put everything together and feel the duende. The duende in flamenco is like the spirit spirit the flamenco spirit when you really feel the get to feel the rhythm and you have the rhythm inside of you and you really are enjoying your dance. So Let's now dance a little bit. So you can ask with the cats with the cats in it. With the cats in it, and I'm gonna ask Larry. Yeah, we'll do that. Here we go. Y ahora nos vamos para Sevilla.
going to stomp in this group, it's going to clock. Okay? So, we're going to, so we are going to be something, something people. Golpes, we're going to do golpes on the floor. Ready? Yes? Ready? So, five. Yeah. Uh -huh. 
The last one is our fin de fiesta. In flamenco, fin de fiesta, they call it, they call it, but that the last piece of the show is where the whole troop get together and it's just for fun. We do like a sun circle, spotlight in the center, and everyone whoever feels like to dance a little bit, get in the center and dance a little for a little bit. The whole fin de fiesta. Our fin de fiesta for today is going to be for Sevillanas. So, yes, you can use your fan if you want to. So, Laurie, why don't you join us? And we're going to perform some Sevillanas. So, before, before we go, I would, like, I would love to hear some jaleos from the audience. Jaleo is an encouragement. This is when you see a flamenco show and you see and you hear this. Ole, agua, que lindo baila, okay. vámonos ya. Okay. That's an encouragement, like the dancers need like to keep going and keep the energy flowing. So I would love to hear that. In Sevillanas, we have four. Wow. It's, it's divided in four pieces. They, some people say it's a story of love, where they meet, they fall in love, they fight, and then. Yeah. Make up. So what we have was what I wanna hear where I wanna hear those haleos every time we finish one part, what I'm gonna hear? Ole. 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 Another one. Agua. 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 Yes. This is so hot, they need water, oh god. That's it. So the lindo baila. Baila, baila. Baila, baila. Baila, baila. So uh, okay, so we need some service. Let's move back to the back a little bit. Back to back. Mimi, can you dance the first one with me? First of Villanas, and vámonos a Sevilla.
Thank you.